Hey everyone, my name is Hui Go, and I'm a volunteer with the National Library Board. When I'm not volunteering, I'm a media consultant, I've been a TV journalist, and I've also written 10 children's books. So what shall we read today? Maylin and the Reunion Dinner. It's written by Deborah Ann Francisco and illustrated by Madeline Wee. And I just want to thank Straits Times Press for permission to read this book. So shall we start? Maylin and the Reunion Dinner. Maylin heard the key slide in the door lock. Mum was home from the wet market. Click! Somebody's coming through the door. Maylin raced to the door to welcome her. Mum's arms were full and she looked tired but happy. She carried three large plastic bags of meat and vegetables in one hand. In the other, she hugged an enormous bundle of pussy willow stalks wrapped with newspaper. Mum unwrapped the long stalks carefully. Maylin felt the pussy willow blossoms with her fingertips. They were so furry. May, can you get to work decorating the branches? Use the hong bao and ribbons I left on the study table. Do you remember how to tie them onto the stalks? I think she does. Maylin nodded. Yes, ma'am, she replied. She had helped last year, so she knew exactly what to do. She even remembered why the Chinese decorate their homes with these flowers. Pussy willow is the traditional flower at Chinese New Year and is a symbol of prosperity. Meilin set to work tying the hong bao with the red ribbons to the branches. Soon she was done. May, come here at once. Mom's voice boomed loudly across the hallway. Meilin knew she was in trouble. She stepped sheepishly into the kitchen. Mom held up an empty plastic container. It was empty except for broken bits of love letters. It was empty because Maylin had eaten all 25 rolls while Mom was at the market. Maylin, these were meant for our guests who visit during Chinese New Year. How could you have eaten them all? I'm sorry, Mom. They were so delicious. Maylin felt ashamed and did not know what else to say. So, empty plastic container. She thought hard and an idea came to her instantly. She knew how to make it up to mom. She dialed a familiar number. Nai Nai, I need your help. I ate the entire tub of love letters you made for mom. Her grandmother chuckled. Oh no, what an appetite you have, May. Hmm, come after lunch tomorrow. We'll make a batch of love letters and after that, you can help me with the preparations for our family reunion dinner. Nai Nai handed Maylin a straw fan as soon as she arrived the next day and told her to gently fan the charcoal stove. The coals beneath the wire mesh glowed a bright red. Keep fanning, May, her grandmother said as she began measuring out her ingredients into small glass bowls. Maylin watched her from where she sat, cross-legged on the floor. That's Nai Nai measuring all the ingredients. Grandmother worked quickly and she recited the ingredients out loud. It was as if she had the recipe for love letters stored in her memory, like the lyrics of a song. Nai Nai, have you learned the recipe by heart? How? Ha! Huh, I have made it so many times for so many years, May. She began beating the mixture of sugar and eggs until it was frothy. Rosita, her grandmother's helper, walked into the kitchen and took over the duty of fanning the charcoal. Go and learn from your Nai Nai, then you can make more love letters to snack on next time. Maylin sat at the kitchen table. She watched as Nai Nai whisked coconut milk in till it was combined well with the eggs and sugar. Then she added the sifted flour and salt to the thick liquid. Now I will whisk till, till there are no lumps and pour the batter through a strainer to make sure the mixture is smooth. Is the fire ready, Rosita? Yes, ma'am. Rosita held a special mold up and nodded. 
It looked old and blackened like it had been used for years and years and had made thousands of love letters. Mei carried the bowl of batter over to her. Rosita knew what to do next. Nai Nai had taught her how to make all the Chinese New Year goodies in the 15 years she had worked for her. Rosita brushed the inside of the round metal mold lightly with cooking oil. Then she scooped a small ladle of the batter and poured it into the mold and clamped it shut. She held the mold over the glowing coals for a few minutes. She opened it once to check if the batter was the right shade of golden brown, then returned the mold to the fire, heating it on the other side. So both sides are golden brown. Malin loved the aroma of the love letters as they baked. After two minutes, Rosita loosened the baked biscuit from the mold with a metal spatula and dropped it into a cookie mat. Nai Nai then took over. She worked quickly to roll the circular flat biscuit around a metal rod so that it resembled a tube. It's soft only when it's hot, so you always have to work quickly, Mei. Now it's your turn. Meilin was surprised at how quickly she could work with the hot flat biscuits with Rosita as her partner. All 80 were baked and rolled rapidly. Let me see. They left the love letters on a rack to cool and then Malin carefully stored them in airtight containers. I think you have earned yourself a snack, May. Nai Nai handed her a golden brown tube. Malin took a bite. What do you think? It was sweet, crisp and delicious. And she earned it, didn't she? Malin noticed that her grandmother had already moved on to preparing the highlight of the day, the reunion dinner. Rosita placed two electric steamboat pots in the middle of the long dining table. Malin knew immediately it was going to be a steamboat feast. She watched as Nai Nai added the ingredients to a large stock pot for the soup. So there's Nai Nai again preparing the soup. While waiting for the stock to be ready, Meilin helped Rosita prepare the raw ingredients for the steamboat. She cut bok choy and enoki mushrooms into 5 cm lengths. She drained the water from the bag of fish balls and put them into a glass bowl. They had been swimming inside the transparent bag since Rosita had bought them from the market. Rosita and Nai Nai were hard at work too. They sliced the beef, pork, fish and abalone thinly and then shelled a bag of prawns. All these were set aside in its own colourful bowl. Then the quail's eggs were boiled and their shells were carefully removed. Rosita put egg noodles into serving dishes. Over the next hour, they prepared all kinds of ingredients for their hot pot celebration. Meilin finally stopped and counted them. There were 19 meats, vegetables, and noodles and three dipping sauces. What a feast. Nai Nai, mom told me to help you with the yusheng. I have an idea for the vegetable arrangement. Can I help please? Her grandmother went into her room and came up with her tablet. Why don't you look up the internet for more ideas? While you are online, search for the auspicious phrases we are supposed to recite as we add the items into the dish. So you can also do that. You can check for the phrases you're supposed to say when you do the yusheng. So yusheng is a raw fish salad that's eaten uh, at Chinese New Year. Rosita and Meilin watched several demonstration videos on the internet for yusheng. Most of the platters were ordinary and the shredded vegetables were piled on the plates in a very traditional way. After watching a few videos, Meilin said, Okay, Auntie Rosita, I know what I'm going to do. With Rosita's help, Meilin shredded carrots, cucumber, white radish, and red capsicum using a spiral vegetable slicer. She arranged the vegetables on the platter, then stood back to admire her handiwork. 
Pussy Willows, that is so clever, May, Rosita exclaimed. <gasps> Nai Nai came excitedly into the kitchen to take a look. May, what a lovely arrangement. It's the nicest Yushan platter I have ever seen. Thanks, Nai Nai. I got the idea from the Pussy Willows in our home. Did you know that Yusheng and the Pussy Willow are both symbols of prosperity? Nai Nai could not reply, for she had remembered the pot of simmering stock and, and hurried to the stove. She tasted the soup and added a sprinkle of salt. She then poured the hot broth into the steamboat pots. She scattered the red goji berries into the soup and Meilin watched as the berries danced on the soup's surface. Dinner was ready. At that moment, Meilin realized that the entire family had been streaming into Nai Nai's house. Her parents had just arrived, so had her uncles, aunts and three cousins. The home had the familiar air of festivity and excitement that Meilin always, always felt on the eve of Chinese New Year. They're all ready. There's only one thing to do next, right? I'm hungry. It's time for Lo Hei, everyone, Meilin chirped. So Lo Hei is another name for Yu Sheng, and it's also the phrase that is said when the vegetables are mixed. It's a reference to tossing up prosperity. So thank you for reading this with me, Meilin and the reunion dinner. I wish you a happy Chinese New Year 2021. Gong si fa tai.